Hello there. Hi, my name is Ben Sassalini and welcome to the channel. Considering the great, considering the amazing, considering the wonderful, no, considering the mind-blowingly and tremendously amazing fact that you, my friend, clicked on this video, I think it's safe to say that you are a little curious what this whole video is about. Well, we will talk about personality types. In my previous videos, we have discussed personality disorders, the anatomy of extroversion and introversion, and now we'll talk about personality and personality types. So, personality again. What an original idea, bravo Bensa. You know that there is more to psychology than personality. Heh. <laughs> By the way, I'm open to suggestions, so if you have any idea what we should discuss next, tell me in the comments. Even if there is a big chance that my mom will be the only one who writes a comment. Ooh, I should ask her. Hey mom, what should I talk about next? On with the video! Okay, but we will talk about personality types and a relatively older model for personality types, the big five. So, let's go to the misty forests of psychology and find the forbidden knowledge of the big five. I have no idea why I said misty. These models can be found literally on Wikipedia and on Google. Anyway, let's go to an adventure! F*** you. Let's talk about the big five personality model. If you're a psychology student, you probably know about this model. If you don't study psychology, but you're really interested in it, you also probably heard about this model. If you know nothing about this model, don't worry, I also didn't know anything about this model until I've learned about it in class because I was too busy watching chubby cat videos instead of learning. So the big five. The big five personality traits are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. You can learn them by their first letters. Ocean, or by a poem written by me just for this occasion. Swimming in the ocean, it's a personality poem. Okay, but why these five personality traits? Let's indulge in the history of making the big five. Okay, but seriously, I think it's interesting. Anyway, there was this five man, Raymond Banner Cattle, or Cattle, or Cattle, anyway, who established 16 different personality types and created a survey for them. Okay, but how did he do all this? In two fairy tale like magical words, lexical study and factor analysis. What is a lexical study? The lexical study states that if we have something important, then we have a word for it in our language. So then it means that language has every important word there is for describing a personality. You know, because if something is important like personality, we have words for it in our language. So if language has every single word there is for describing a personality, then we should search for every word there is, or at least almost every word there is for describing a personality, and let's reduce them to groups. And let's find out how many groups there are and what these groups represent. In the case of the big five, there are five groups and they represent openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness and neuroticism. By the way, the big five will be another dude, but I think it's really important to talk about the 16 personality traits by Cattle because this was the base for creating a big five. Okay, but how did Cattle find these 16 personality traits in four steps? First, he grabbed the dictionary and monotonously started to select all the adjectives referring to personality. It was almost, if not more boring than me explaining this to you. So he finally selected like thousands of words. Then he asked people to rate themselves regarding to every single adjective. All of the thousands and thousands of adjectives. How much kind you think you are, how much agreeable you think you are, how much of a jerk you think you are. And thirdly, here it comes the wonderful word, factor analysis. <laughs> what does this magical word entail? It is a statistical process when you have a bunch of variables, stuff, and you want to reuse them into less variables, stuff variables. So from a lot of stuff you create less stuff. So you have a lot of stuff and you want to put this stuff into logical groups. So you have less stuff. I know you can understand it, but imagine it like this. You have a triangle, a square, a circle and a poop shaped object. You can't count to four, you can only count to two. So in the beginning you have four different groups representing the four different objects. Then based on their similarity, you, in the case of factor analysis, a statistical program, so you put these groups into bigger groups. So now you have two groups which you can call triangle square or circle poop. And that's how factor analysis works. It analyzes the variables in the beginning and it puts them into logical groups and it does it again and again and again until you say that, okay, I can count to five. So now you have five groups based on the similarity, based, based on the similar, based on the similar, based on the similarity, based on the similarity of the variables. So in the case of the study by Kettle, using factor analysis, he reduced the thousands and thousands of words into 16 groups. And fourthly, finally, he defined and named the 16 personality traits. 
but after analyzing and redoing this study by other scientists, they couldn't find the same result, they couldn't replicate the results, they didn't get these 16 traits. The problem? 16 factors. 16 is just too much. Whew! That was long. Do you want to relax with a joke? I don't have any, so let's just relax with a chubby cat picture. So 16 factors are just too much, so here comes this brilliant mind, Goldberg, who says that let's reduce these 16 factors into 5. Why can't I reproduce the same results, the 16 personality traits? Why can I replicate my findings? Man, 16 is just too much. Let it be 5, like the 5 planets, or the holy trinity, or the 5 apostles, it makes sense. Anyway dude, I'm going surfing in the ocean. Ocean. So without any jokes, Goldberg was the scientist to define the big five personality traits. But it wouldn't be possible without Cattle and his method, lexical study combined with factor analysis. Goldberg defined the five personality traits, the big five, but it wouldn't be possible without Cattle. He took the findings and studies of Cattle as a starting point. So Goldberg found the five personality traits. Openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. But here is an interesting anecdote that one of my teachers told me. Goldberg, with his new Big Five, was a superstar in the field of psychology. And I can't blame him, he just created a universal personality categorization. It is a big deal. But there were two other scientists, Costa and Macri. They were scientists who were also studying personality traits and personality categorization. But they have found only three traits. Then Goldberg told them that let this tree be a five, it looks better if it's five. And they added two more factors and every Everybody was happy. By the way, I have no idea if it's true or not, it's just an anecdote. And either way, the statistics of psychological studies just like these are really complicated, so, so it's really likely that Goldberg just helped them fix a statistical error or something like that. Sorry Goldberg, there are only three factors, there are only three personality traits. Let me see. I think it's five. It's still three. It's five. It's three. I'm going to shout until you change it to five. It's stupid and it won't work. Five then. Thank you, I always liked you guys. So let's define and talk about the five personality traits. Openness. Openness to experience is the whole term. They are open to experience, they are curious people, they are open to emotions, beauty, and they are willing to try new things. You know, these are the people who we consider to be more creative. These people have constantly new ideas, and they want to indulge in the experience that we call life. But they are not necessarily extroverts as well. You can be open to experience while you are not the center of the group. Conscientiousness. The key here is self-discipline, impulse control, and focus they can sacrifice their desires for the greater good. These are the people who you can trust, and these people will never be laid from anywhere. Extraversion. Extraversion and introversion, actually. This is the whole term. We have discussed this topic a little in one of my previous videos, so check it out if you want. Extraversion and introversion is a scale between partying non-stop at night while at day you go bungee jumping with cocaine in your head, and reading a book alone. Okay, but seriously, with extraversion, the focus is on the external word. That's why we call them extra words. while introverts focus on their inner words. That's why we can call them introverts. It is very important to say that there is no good or bad, like extroverts are good, introverts are bad, or vice versa. It's not like that. For example, extroverts tend to be more successful in social situations, that's okay, but they depend on social activities. While on the other hand, introverts are more independent, which can be a great value. So both have values. Agreeableness. Agreeable people really like to get along with others. The goal for them is to create harmony and understanding in a community. Empathy can be their biggest thing. Empathy can be their biggest strength. Jesus. Empathy can be their biggest strength. They are generally kind, helpful, and trusting. Neuroticism. Neuroticism, neuroticism. neuroticism is connected to emotional instability, or on the other hand, emotional stability. Neuroticism is also connected to low tolerance of stress and adverse stimuli. So someone who has high level of neuroticism, when seeing a lion, he just stands still and cries. But someone who has low level of neuroticism, runs like hell and somehow resolve the situation. Okay, but why these five personality traits other than this is the result for a factor analysis? Why? Openness, conscientiousness, conservation, agreeable, and nerdism. Bus, an evolutionary psychologist, says that because there are five aspects of adaptation. If we want to survive and adapt to our environment, we should consider five things, thus the five personality traits. Or at least in the early days of humanity, these five things were really important if we wanted to survive. One, where am I in the hierarchy? 
this is extroversion. 2. Whom can I work with? Who is generous and kind? Who can agree with me? This is agreeableness. 3. Who is reliable? Whom can I trust? And who wants to wrong me? This is conscientiousness. 4. If there's a problem, who can I lean on? Who can I trust to be productive and helpful in my crisis? This is neuroticism. And 5. Who is the one who creates new things and brings progression and advancement in our community? This is openness. So, from an evolutionary psychological standpoint, this is why the big five is the big five. This is why these are the five personality traits. So that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I really enjoyed working on this video. Uh, writing was one of the most fun parts, so I really enjoyed it. I'm again and again impressed by how much fun psychology can be, even though these models and studies can be a little boring to someone, but not to me. I really enjoyed it. By the way, in my next video, I'm going to talk about a relatively newer model, a newer approach to personality categorization and personality types, a newer model, which brings a new approach, a new way of thinking to the table. So stay tuned for that. But with this video, I really hope that I could show you how much fun psychology can be. If you want to subscribe, I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm not gonna stop you, it really helps out the channel, so thank you, thank you, thank you. If you don't, well, f you. No, I'm just joking, no, no, no. It's perfectly okay if you don't wanna subscribe. So, thank you again. Thank you for watching this video. And finally, you know, love yourself and bye. Hello, Future Benza here. I uh, just wanted to let you know that I couldn't find the original citation and links for the bus study, you know, the evolutionary psychological study. I'm really sorry for this. I searched for half an hour and I could find literally nothing on Google and on various platforms. So, sorry and bye.